Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and I would like to welcome you all to our latest Snowbridge webinar episode. In this week's episode, Visual Arc 1.9, BIM Architectural Software for Rhino. The webinar will cover the BIM features Visual Arc 1.9 adds to Rhino based on the following points. Work with parametric architectural objects, generate 2D plans and section drawing linked uh, with 3D model, IFC import and export to exchange model between Rhino and other AAC software. Overview of the Visual Art Graph software components and on. So it's going to be packed. Today's presenter, um, sorry, uh, today, here we go. Today's presenter, that's where I was getting at, is uh, Frances Sala, an architect and the product manager of Visual Art. He is in charge of the testing, support, and demos of Visual Art since 2010 when he joined the SUNICAP team. Besides, he has a wide experience in 3D architectural software, so as a professional user of the software, it's very demanding when it comes to improving visual art. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do at Novage. Novage is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Put us to the test and come visit our webpage at novage.com. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, pay a visit to the Novage blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Coming up next week, Modo 901, exciting new features. John Bavaresco from the Thunder will be highlighting some of Modo 901's new and enhanced modeling tools, as well as improved sculpting features. Last but not least, today's webinar is free and is being recorded live. So if you want to watch this or any other webinar episode, you just head on over to Novage's YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now, let's um, pass, I'm going to pass the screen to Francesc so he can start his presentation. Francesc, um, you will be asked to share your screen. Please do. Yes. And um, it's showtime. Okay, thank you very much, Barbara, and thanks to, to Novetch for organizing this webinar once again. Today we will see an overview of, of Visual Arc, okay, also focusing on the on the latest uh, version 1.9. As Barbara introduced it, Visual Arc is a product of Asunicat, which is a company based in Barcelona. We belong to the same group as McNeil Europe, so um, we collaborate with them, with, the, with McNeil uh, developers. To, uh, to make Visual Arc and Rhino be uh, as compatible as, as, as possible. Okay, so we have a very straight collaboration, very close collaboration with, with the McNeil, McNeil team. And Visual Arc is a, um, is a software that works on the top of Rhino, okay? And uh, it's aimed to improve the process of working with architectural projects inside Rhino, okay? So the idea that um, from the 3D model, you can create all the 2D drawings, sections, plans, uh, etc. Okay, actually Visual Art adds beam features to Rhino. So from one model, from the 3D geometry, you can obtain all the 2D documentation which is attached to the to the 3D model. Okay, Visual Art is aimed at architects and designers, professionals of the architecture, uh, Rhino users, of course, engineers, interior architects, Grasshopper users, as we'll see later on, uh, how in Visual Arc integrates also in, into Grasshopper, and also uh, render artists. So with Visual Arc, you can quickly create the 3D architectural project, and uh, it supports uh, the same render engines as Rhino does. And Visual Arc takes advantage of the Rhino features to work with freeform shapes, so no matter how the, the the, how complex the model is. So with Visual Art you can, um, it improves the workflow of uh, working with this kind of uh, complex architectural projects. Okay, this is the Randall Stout uh, 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 Gallery, by the, the Alberta Art Gallery by Randall Stout Architects. So just a kind of example that uh, Visual Art can uh, improve the, the, the process of working with this kind of, of models. Visual Art provides um, a set of architectural objects which are parametric that can be edited through their properties, as we'll see later on, and which makes it easier to um, to change to edit the model after they have been inserted. Okay, they support nerves so that they can adapt to any any shape. 
also this idea about BAM, okay, building information modeling. From the 3D model, uh, all the floor plans, elevations, uh, drawings, schedule uh, uh, quantity takeoffs, schedule tables are attached to the 3D model, so they update automatically after change. Okay, and Rhino pro itself provides all the 2D CAD and drafting tools required to uh, finish the documentation work of the of the project. Okay, page layouts, uh, dimensions, annotations, etc. One of the main important features that Visual Arts to Rhino is the option to export models to IFC, but also since the last version imports uh, IFC models. So all the, these architectural objects that Visual Arts provides, when they are exported to IFC, are recognized by the output of software as uh, architectural objects, so they can further uh, can be further edited. And now Visual Arts can import uh, IFC models. So uh, we can keep on working with this, with these objects, with these architectural objects, as if they were uh, native visual art objects as well. We will see that as well later on. As I said, visual art is a powerful tool to create sections, to uh, shot interesting renders, okay, to quickly model the project in 3D for, for applying materials. So it supports the same render engines as, as Rhino, okay, and. It integrates in Grasshopper through this add-on called Visual Art Grasshopper Components, we will see at the end of this, of this webinar. Uh, just a few development system facts. Visual Art is, uh, is developed, we release uh, new versions every four, six months. Uh, versions are free for Visual Art users and we, uh, for, we base our development in the in the, in the user's uh, feedback, so feel free to, to write us for any suggestion, uh, an idea that, that may uh, help us improve the, the software for, for the future, okay? It has a very affordable price and has also educational versions that, like Rhino educational licenses, are uh, fully uh, commercial licensed but at a specific, at a reduced price and can be used for professional purposes. Okay, you have more information at the, at the website. You can download uh, a 30 day trial from the, from the uh, website, but you can write me if you want an extension of the evaluation version to any of these emails you can, you can see here. Okay, so now let's have a look at the, at the, the live model. Here we have a, a model created with visual art geometry, but also it has uh, Rhino objects. So at the end, everything integrates in one in one model. So you can combine Visual Arc geometry with uh, Rhino geometry. For example, this uh, this ramp here is based, is created with three polar surfaces. Okay, but the rest of the geometry are Visual Arc objects. For example, we have got a, a wall here. This is a window. Okay, column, and so forth. Uh, one of the main features that Visual Arts to, to, to Rhino is the option to work at different levels. Actually, here we have the same, the, the main Visual Art toolbar. So we have uh, the set of uh, architectural objects. We have another toolbar with the documentation tools. And finally, a third toolbar with some additional tools. And one of those is this option to work uh, with, uh, with different levels. So let's talk this toolbar here, and this level manager uh, lets us divide, uh, manage the project in different levels, so we can select this building, add new levels here, which basically, let's call it top, basically creates a construction plane at a specific elevation, okay, and that makes it easy, we can switch from uh, one floor to another, just moving this, uh, the position of this construction plane that every floor has, okay, indicated by this elevation here. Actually, if we see the model from one of the side viewports, we can see this, um, these reference lines that tells us the position of these, of these construction planes. And also we have these light bulbs that uh, we can turn off and they hide the uh, levels as if they were liars. So this is Basically, they were like if we had a clipping plane 
on the at the top and at the bottom of each level. So every time we had a floor, everything uh, above this uh, this floor uh, uh, construction plane is hidden. Okay, and when we work from the perspective view, we can also hide levels like that. And that makes it easier to uh, work from the inside of the model, also to show the model very, very nicely. Okay, so we can work from here, which helps a lot to to work with it. And also, um, we can hide the, the level one, for example, here, and work from from the inside. Also, each level has this code plane that we can activate from this icon up here which move this uh, clipping plane up to a distance which is defined by this value here from the uh, level uh, elevation. And this is the, the common distance from which we usually cut the, all the openings of uh, a, a, every floor. So when uh, this cut plane is activated from the top viewport, so we move to the, to the top viewport, we can do double click on one specific level to automatically hide the levels above and we can activate this cut plane and just notice that now all the visual objects show their 2D representation. So the objects, not only for example the walls show their uh, their intersection solved, doors show their, their opening side, so we can work from the 2D drawing but we are actually editing the, the 3D geometry. Okay, so this is kind of bidirectional uh, workflow of 2D and 3D at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to open a new a new document. Okay, because we will create a new project from from scratch. Actually, I have already some some curves that I will use to to create my my geometry from. Okay, let's activate the the grid. So the process of working with these objects is very simple and very intuitive, basically we run the wall command and we get the list of wall styles, I've got just four in this document, but here we specify some uh, insertion options and we can draw walls of, as if we were drawing uh, polylines. Okay, let's put that in mode. Just notice that uh, the walls already solve their intersection at corners. We can now insert a door or a window here, okay, so the door just detects where the wall is and creates the opening automatically. We can move that door outside and we can detach the, the door from, from the wall. But as soon as it is placed close to a, a, a wall, it snaps it and uh, creates the opening automatically. So we have also some uh, options to edit these objects. For example, we can edit, we can turn their control points on so we can stretch the door the wall from this extension arrow. We can select the, the two control points at the edge of these two, uh, two walls to stretch them together or we can, for example, use this uh, vertical extension arrow to change the height of the, of the wall. For doors, we can also use this control point to change the opening side of the door. But all the visual objects have control points so it, they are easy to, to, to edit as uh, uh, Rhino geometry is. But we can also edit them uh, through the, the parametric values. So since they are parametric objects, when we select them, actually we can do a multiple selection, and here uh, all the object types are detected. So we can select, for example, the walls and change their, their style. Okay, we can change their heads. Let's put a, a common value for all the, the walls, but we can select now the door and change its dimensions, okay? So we can uh, edit them uh, numerically. Actually, visual objects are blocks, smart blocks, we can see. So if we explode them, they become Rhino polish surfaces. So now we can keep on working with them as if they were created using Rhino polish surfaces. But, or, or surfaces, but of course, they lose their parametric uh, options when doing that. Okay, let's delete that and um, we're going to create now uh, walls uh, from curves. Actually here under the wall command we have different commands to do operation with walls. 
some of uh, that is the option to create uh, Wallstorm curves. So when we run this command, again, we get this insertion dialog. So we pick the style and we select the curves we want to turn into, into walls. We hit enter and they automatically uh, become, uh, become walls. And we can repeat it to create the inside walls. In this case, I change another, select another style. I pick this, these curves and the inside walls are now created. Okay, so um, let's turn this this walls layer on off. Now I'm going to create the slabs. Before that, uh, if we see the model from the top, we see that uh, well, in this case, there were already two levels created. So I'm watching the upper level with a cut plane on. So that's why we see this uh, intersection solved and the, the model in. in to the representation. And um, doing right click on any uh, object, we open the styles of this, of, this, um, of this object type. So here, from this styles dialog, we can manage all the uh, features of each style. For example, in this case, we've got this, this style that has just one component, in, in this case, a layer but we can select it and from these steps change uh, the layer where it goes, the material it has, the projection and the section attributes and from here we can edit the, the type, the function, the wrappings okay, and also the thickness of this layer. We can create new styles through this wizard. So let's create a new one called it new for example. We determine here the number of steps, uh, the number of layers and uh, the name and thickness for each layer. So we just have to follow the steps of this wizard and very easily we create a new, new style. Once the style is done, it appears at the end of this list. We can actually now edit further the representation of this, of this uh, style. So we can change the thickness if we want to modify it. Under the attributes tab, we can assign here a specific pattern, okay, and so forth. And we can use these styles for our documents. So there is an option to export the styles from here. Okay, so we can export them and use all these styles in another document and then import them, import this, this file uh, that has all these new styles into a new document. So we can uh, finally create a custom library of all the object styles we, we, we are used to, to work with. Okay. So now uh, we're going to create the slabs. In the last version of Visual Arc, the slab command has improved a lot. So now we can create them uh, as if they were rectangles. So we can create a slab here from this rectangle directly. Actually, I will turn this layer on. Okay, let's change the position of the construction plane. Now we can create a new slab for here and as any other object I still have the options to create them from curves so I just have to pick the from curves option in the command line and pick a curve which creates um, a slab automatically. Also from the since the last option, visual art version it is possible to create a uh, new styles for slabs. So again, in this case, I open the, I do right click on the wall, on the, on the slab icon. It opens the, the, the slab styles dialog. Here I have this existing uh, style that I can, for example, I can assign here a, a solid pattern, okay? But I can create new, new styles just with this button and I can, for example, add a new layer to this, to this slab. Okay, so I have Double, sla double layer, multiple layer slab. I can move that to the top, assign here a specific color. So let's, let's uh, pick uh, this dark gray color, okay? And I could assign here different section and projection attributes, assign different materials, etc. Okay, maybe we can change the, the thickness. Also, we can change the thickness of this of this layer. Actually, the thicknesses can be uh, set by style, but can be also changed by object, by the object instance. 
okay? And now we can change these uh, two uh, slabs for the new style I have created, okay? So still I can create, I can add uh, boundaries or subtract boundaries from a slab, so in this case I'm going to subtract this boundary, okay? And the same for this, the command. All right, and I will create again a slab from a curve. I will pick the standard and we'll use this curve for the other slab. So I have here two slabs, one with two layers and another one with just one layer. Okay. All right, so now um, we can insert the windows of this uh, in this model. So we go to the to the layers. I will switch the layer where the openings curves are located. And um, okay, now I run the window command. Uh, we can insert windows the same way as doors. Okay, we define here some. We can pick one of the predefined sizes. We can also pick other, okay, and insert here a custom, a custom height, a custom dimension. But there is also the option to create them from curves. So if we select again the window, the window command, we pick uh, the style, and from the command line again select it from curves, and we just pick the curves we want to convert into uh, into windows. I will leave this as it, it is. Okay. All right. I hit enter and the windows are created on the uh, position of the of the curves. But as soon as I move them close to the wall, they snap to it and create the, the opening automatically. Okay, so I can do the same for this facade. Uh, run again the window command. Now we'll pick this fixed style, select from curves option, and I will pick these curves for that windows. Okay, uh, we can do the same for doors. So I select the hint symbol for this door, and I select the garage style for that door. Okay, and I just now have to move these openings close to the to the walls so they detect their position. Okay, so now let's hide this opening layer. We can create now the the, the stair. Okay, so we'll put the construction plane on the level minus one. We run the stair uh, object. We select one of these styles, and we just now have to pick one point and uh, insert the stair. As you can see here, this stair is very, very, very width, so we can uh, change the width from here. Actually, this rule icon is very useful because we can measure the width from here. We define here the number of, of steps, the step count, okay, and insert the, the stair. Just um, Notice how long it will take to create this object in, in Rhino, okay? And how easy it is to create it with Visual Arc, especially if you had to, to change uh, its parameters afterwards. So we can now select this their object and, for example, change the uh, dimension of the thread, okay? Change the dimensions of, the, of the, the number of the steps or change its height. So let's put here three meters, okay? Well, what we can do now is to adjust the position of this of this hole, of the slab, just selecting the control points of this of this slab, and we can move this from here to here. Okay. Actually, the slabs have the same control points as the original curves uh, they were used to create them. All right. I just finally can insert here uh, uh, some railings, so I can create railing uh, straight from in the model, so let's put the construction plane on that level, 
Okay. Or I can create them from groups. Actually, this is. I can move this in the other side. Yeah. Or I can create them from curves. So let's turn the layer where the railings are and run the railing command. I pick this style, select from curves option, and here we go. Now I see that the alignment was not correct, so I can change it from the properties panel again. Okay. I will now insert the doors from the from the top viewport. So if we move to the level minus one, uh, I can just create the doors directly here. So I select the finger symbol, for example. Okay, and I can insert doors as simple as that. As you see, I'm working in 2D now. But I am inserting to the object, so I can make this uh, this wall smaller just to make leave some space here to go to upper floor. Okay. Actually, see this floor, this wall is aligned in the wrong position, so I can also change that. Okay, here we go. And uh, actually, we could create also also walls from from curves, but any kind of curve, not only straight curves. Again, let me create here a, a curve. Okay, and we can actually in this case instead of creating it from curves, I do I will do right click to to call the wall set path command. So I will change the, the path of this wall into this other curve, okay? And the doors uh, just adapt to, to the new position, okay? Actually, let me just change that, this opening side. Okay, so now let's create the roof, all right? Turn the light where the roof is actually have just a boundary curve. This is going to change the next version, 2.0, but now uh, the roof command works by picking uh, an existing curve. I can select the roof type from here. Let's select the gable. I enter the slope, 30 degrees all right, thickness, and finally I define the, the axis direction. This creates this roof automatically. I can move it up and down. And there is a command here that I didn't explain before, which is the option to extend walls to objects. That can be the roof, can be a slab, can be a poly surface, an open surface, can anything. Okay, so I run this command, I select these walls, and now from the command line I specify the direction. So I select top, I pick this uh, roof as the entity, and the walls extend uh, to the roof. Okay, when uh, you do that, um, they remain attached to the position of the position of this roof. So if we change it, the uh, extension is is updated. Okay. All right. So now let's have a look at the imagine that we are done with the with the 3D 3D modeling. Let's have a look at the documentation tools. So if we want to create a section view, for example. First, we have to run this section line, which asks for a position of a of a section view of a section line that can be actually a jagged section. When we are done, we do right click. We finally select the viewer position and a section depth, and finally a text. A. Okay, this depth is very important because if I select the control points of this section view. I can see the area of the object that will be included in the section view afterwards. But the section line also can be used for uh, for playing with the dynamic section tool, which shows the model section in real time according to this section line position. We can shut renders from here, 
okay, we can explain how the model is created. We can flip this uh, this position, this this section line, using the control points. Okay, we can change the position of the control points. So so on. So I will turn this section view off, and um, now I'm going to create a section view. Run this command, select style, select the section line, and finally insert this section view, which creates a 2D drawing of the uh, of the model, which is attached to the section line. So if we put if we move this outside, we'll get a, a, an elevation instead of a section. Okay, but it updates automatically at uh, any change. And actually, if we add more more uh, more objects here, for example, we can add the stair here in this side. So now we we'll pick this and uh, let's put the construction plane there. I will put this width to two and the number of steps to 25 and head meter, three meters. Maybe this is too much. Okay. All right, so I just need to here add uh, a boundary to this slab. Okay, so it reaches the, the, the stair. Okay, so any change uh, I do on the CD model, when I'm done, I just need to select this section view, and here under the tools toolbar, I can update it. And changes uh, will be will show in this section view. Okay, in the same way, I can uh, create uh, plan views. So I run this command, select the section style, uh, plan view style, sorry, one of the levels I have in the model. So I need to pick a boundary for its to include in this plan view, and finally an insertion point. And this creates again this um, a 2D drawing of the of the plan view that we can uh, print in vector output, which is something that is not possible to to do if we want to print this uh, model from the top viewport. Okay. Just having a look of other documentation tool. There is a command to create spaces, which basically uh, asks for an insertion point, which detects the area surrounded by walls, and we specify a, a name, okay? And we can see here the area and the perimeter of this, of this space. So we can do the same for this other space, etc., etc. okay? And if we uh, modify the 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 boundary of this of this room, we just need to update this object, this space object, which will uh, update automatically. Okay. This information displayed here is determined by the styles, the space styles. So we can display also the volume, the height of this space. There are, we can determine the, the pattern to fill this with. Okay, so we can. Here, just assign under the attributes tab a specific pattern to show um, how this space is, is represented. Okay. Right. There is also a, a command that students of architecture loves uh, love to do, which is this uh, opening elevations that uh, selecting the openings, they uh, it creates them in elevation with the dimensions, okay? All of them uh, at the same time. And they are linked to, to them. So if we modify the, the dimension of one of these openings, we just, we, we just have to select them and update them. We have also this table command that uh, lists the information of the objects in the model, so we can 
for example, select this table style for walls. We select all these walls. Notice that the selection filters the, the object types that are walls. And we can now insert this table, which tells us the amount of uh, walls we have for each style, the total amount of length, area, and volume. So we, we can um, identify the, the, the material we, we, we need it for constructing these, these objects. We can export that to Excel, so we just have to run the context me, contextual menu, and here we could export this table to open it in, in Excel. Okay. All right, as I was saying before, when we prepare the page layout, we can tell in each detail viewport to show the, the model from the top view. Okay, section it according to, to the cut plane and the, the top viewport. Or we can show, as here we can do, we can show this plan view we have created that has the advantage that uh, we will be able to print as a vector output since these are a collection of 2D lines. Okay. All right, now I would like to show you a little bit about the, the Visual R Grasshopper components. So we'll run Grasshopper. Okay. And uh, tell you about uh, how it works. So Visual R Grasshopper components is a plugin that is installed, uh, installed separately and uh, lets uh, us work uh, and create the visual object inside Grasshopper. So the way to work with it is very simple. We insert, uh, for example, um, a wall component. Let's, let me put the construction plan here, just in case. So we insert this wall component, which requires a path curve and some additional options if we want to add more detail. So we create a curve. We put a curve component here to, to reference this curve, and we will insert here in the path, in the wall path. Okay. If we want to add more options to that wall, we just need to plug here, um, to launch here a, a wall options component that we'll plug in here. And here we have the same uh, parameters that we have when we edit a wall object the style, the alignment, the alignment offset, and the height. So we want to change the height of this, of this wall. Okay, we just uh, define here a higher value. And we can change this, the height of this wall. We can uh, also decide here the style it takes, and there are two ways to do that. Actually here under the wall box, we have all the components related to walls. There is the option to create a new wall style, or there is the option to uh, reference an existing style in that document from this, uh, from one of these panels here, from the wall style panel. So here, if we do right click on it, we set one wall style, and this opens this dialog that tells us the list of existing styles in the model. So we can select this new create that we created before, say OK, and we plug this here to uh, change the style of this of this wall. Okay. Now, if we wanted to create um, a door, the process is the same. We put one of these door components here, which basically requires a position that we will determine by these points. Okay. So we reference this point for this component, and this will be the position of the door, okay, which now floats here in the in the model space. But as soon as I tell this door goes into that wall, uh, it snaps to it, okay, to the closest point. All right, and we can also uh, add more information to the door. We can put these uh, door options, which let us choose the style, the profile, the um, for example the the, the aperture. Okay, or we can change the, the profile. So here we have a list of profile components that are used for, for beams, for, for openings, for, for uh, columns. We can put this 
in this case a rectangular profile to change the dimensions of the, that profile, or we can actually use a custom profile which from any curve, for example this curve that we will reference here, we can use this uh, custom profile component that translates any curve like that into a valid curve that we can use for the profile of uh, our door in this case. So, of course, we can rotate that and change it and it will adapt to, to the door position. We can also change the elevation, for example. All right. And when we bake these two objects, okay, so we select them, run this bake operation, and they become uh, native visual objects in the model. Okay, so go to properties and they are recognized as a door and as a wall. All right, so just showing you another example of uh, a definition that combines different visual art uh, components. This is, well, let me just remove that. Okay, this is a very simple definition that uh, reproduces this, uh, this domino system, this structural system from the Corbusier. And, um, well, basically from these inputs here, we can choose the, uh, well, the grid of these columns, okay, or the uh, distance between the columns or the, the level height. Okay, so we can set this to 15, for example. All right. Now, when we bake the geometry, All them are uh, visual art objects in the model. So we can now uh, create a section out of it. Okay. We can, uh, let's create it very quickly. Or now we can export this model to, to IFC. Remember that in the introduction I, I mentioned that one of the main features of Visual Art is the capability to export models to this, uh, fi to this file format, which is the standard uh, file format to communicate with other software that have also work also work with um, with parametric objects. Okay, so before doing that, uh, I would like to to show you one of the latest features of Visual Art, which is the option to to assign IFC properties to any kind of geometry. So imagine that we have a volume like that, which could be a, a column or a floor or anything. Okay, let's actually create a, a freeform floor here. Okay, so we'll just deform a little bit. Just to show you, this is a freeform shape that we have the option to, let's give some, some thickness. So we, sorry, we just run the offset surface command. Okay, some distance, solid, yes, okay, well. This is just um, a surface that, of course, if we uh, extend this section view, it also appears in, in section views. So everything appears in the in the in the visual arc uh, uh, sections. We can we have the option here to assign specific uh, section attributes because section attributes are this are the, are assigned by styles in case of visual art objects that can be signed by this option here for uh, run a geometry. Okay, so we're saying this, this section uh, view, so if I move this there, I will see this, uh, this solid also section it with this section, section attributes. Okay, so basically, basically we could have the full model created with run a geometry, and just by assigning these section attributes, we could have also the the section views and, and elevations create also the, the plan views. But uh, in order to export that uh, geometry IFC with a specific information, we have this option here 
the FC tag that lets us uh, assign if it's a IFC uh, categories to uh, to this geometry. So we get a list of IFC types, and we can, for example, uh, export that assign an IFC slab type to this geometry. So when we export that to IFC, just simple as save as and select the um, the output folder. Actually, there is an option here to assign these IFC categories by layer, so we can tell this that all the um, geometry in that documentation goes to well are exported to this specific with this specific uh, category. Okay, or we can tell to do not export all the objects included in this layer. Okay, so this is an, an additional option. And if I go to Revit and I open this this file I have just exported. So let's open it. We will see how Revit uh, identifies the geometry that we have exported. Okay. Well, Revit is doing that. I would like to show you also the, the opposite way, so the other direction. Since the last version of Visual Arc, as I said at the beginning, is it possible to import IFC files. So now I'm going to uh, open a, a model created with Revit, this modern house, which is one of the simple uh, objects, models that Re Revit uh, provides. And we'll see how Visual Art recognizes this net geometry. Okay, here it is the model. We shade it. And as you can see, we have, well, it seems like Rabbit opened the other file. Okay, back to, back to Rhino. If we have a look at this model, we see that this geometry is recognized as a visual arc slab. This is actually a visual arc wall, so we can have a look at uh, its style properties, okay. We can further edit it, we can assign to the attributes, we can change the, the thickness and so forth, okay. Also these objects are uh, recognized, this is recognized as a window, so we can move it, you see that the hole is uh, recalculated. Actually this window, as you can see, uh, has different, it has different um, components and, and uh, information than, than Visual Arc uh, window styles have. And in order to cope with these differences, Visual Arc recognizes this window as an object created from a block. So we have a look at this style. We see that this window uh, in the blocks tab uh, uses a, a block for its 3D representation. This is also a feature of Visual Arc for uh, coping with these designs that are not available with the standard uh, components with uh, with uh, components and, and features that that the visual art objects have. Okay, there is also an option here to to uh, assign a 2D block for the 2D representation of the of the window. If there is no block selected, the 2D representation will be uh, the one of the real section of this geometry. Okay, and all the information about levels is also here, so we can hide levels work as if this model was created directly in Visual Arc. Okay, level one, we activate the cut plane. So you see that, let's put this in hidden display mode. So we see here all the representation of the, the Visual Arc, uh, the, all this architectural uh, geometry. Okay, so let's have a look at back to Rhino, how has uh, read this 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 uh, model, and we have a look at this. We see that the visual art objects are recognized as native uh, Rhino objects. So this is a floor. We can edit the type. Uh, we can change their properties. Okay, this is a stair. Same, Re recognizes it as a, a stair. 
in case of this geometry, as you see, uh, since we gave uh, the, the, the attribute of an, uh, the AFC category of a floor, Revit recognizes it as a floor as well. Okay. So um, you can also, well, you can have the full model with visual and render geometry, and just by assigning these FC categories, we can import that as a full architectural uh, um, BIM uh, model. Okay. So, well, I think I explained pretty much what I wanted to, to explain. Uh, Barbara, I don't know if, if uh, we can leave some time for questions and, and, and yes. doubts from the question. audience. We have one question, uh, Francesca. Sure. Uh, how does Visual Arc create axonometric drawings? <laughs> axonometric drawings? Um, well, there is there is a tool in Rhino to create, uh, I mean, 2D drawings from, from views. So we put this uh, model in parallel, okay? We could uh, create a make 2D from this viewport, but this is basically a Rhino feature. In the future, we, we are planning to, uh, to also create kind of um, parametric uh, views, 2D views from also from axonometric, from perspective views, not only from uh, like section or, or plan views, but also from from perspective views. Okay, right now you can you can uh, create a 2D drawing of this view using the Make 2D tool, but this is not a, a parametric object, so they will not update if you change the the 3D model. Okay, very cool, and um, that was it. That was the only question, I think uh, you were very clear, the software is very intuitive. That's fantastic. Okay. The import-export is great. It's very exciting. So, um, more cooperation and, uh, you know, everything works. Perfect. Um, so, I will have to take the screen back and um, I will uh, say our goodbyes, but you say, um, I want to um, thank everybody for uh, joining us today. And I want to remind everyone to visit our page at Novage.com where you will find Visual Art and also Rhino. And Novage is the best way to buy design software online. For information on latest special and new releases, join the Novage Network on Facebook or Plus or Twitter and subscribe to the Novage blog. But a great interview this week um, about Rhino and parametric architecture. Check it out. Don't forget that next week's webinar is about Modo 901 exciting new features. And to watch today's webinar or previous ones, check out our Novage YouTube and Vimeo channels. Our webinar playlist has webinars for every software case. Thanks again for joining us. Have a wonderful day. And I want to especially thank Francesca and Eric for being up with us so late and uh, after hours in Spain. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> have a, you, have a wonderful You're night. Welcome. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.